and welcome to another one of our webinar series uh, at SDA and with Deliver Blumens. Thank you so much for joining us. I have Alexi. I'm not going to be able to sell you, say your last name correctly. I should have asked you before we started. How do I pronounce your last name, Alexi? Nole. Nole. Okay. Yeah, it's the French accent. <laughs> I watch enough hockey. Um, so, um, uh, with Structura, um, Structura is a, a new line for SDA. Uh, the coming out party was to be Leducation, but uh, you know, state of the world, we're not doing that this year. So we're introducing them this way. Um, and when uh, we had a training at SDA. Uh, before social distancing started, and I was just blown away by the, the variety and the interesting pieces of product that Structura puts, uh, can produce right here in the United States out of uh, the Kansas City area. Um, and so we're breaking up the training into two sessions. Today, we're going to focus on wooden products, uh, poles, bollards, and lighting fixtures. And then next week, we're going to talk about steel and uh, aluminum poles and lighting fixtures attached to those. Um, Feel free to use the chat button or the Q&A button down below to ask questions, and uh, I'll interject with those as we go. And from there, I will let, uh, I'll let Alexi do his thing. Okay, well, thanks, JP. Uh, so welcome home, uh, welcome all to, uh, to this presentation. My name is Alexis Nolet. I'm the East Coast Regional Sales Manager for Structura. Uh, the company has been around for about 10 years. As JP was saying, we're based out of Kansas City. Everybody, everything is designed uh, and manufactured there. Uh, so the company, uh, we, we specialize in outdoor lighting products. Uh, essentially, we have wood product, aluminum product, and uh, steel solution as, as well. Uh, for this presentation, we have five main parts. Uh, first, I'm going to uh, talk about the type of wood we're using to manufacture our products. Uh, then I'm going to show you some examples of wood bollards and columns uh, we design, then some wood poles. Then we're going to move into the wood fixtures for both outdoor and indoor applications. Uh, and we will try to uh, talk about all of that in about 15 minutes. Unless you have too much question, then it might last a bit longer. Uh, essentially, uh, Structura works uh, with a wood called Akoya. It's a brand name. Uh, Akoya is a pine tree grown in FSC certified forest uh, that goes through a process called acetylation. So what that process involves, uh, the wood lumbers are placed into a reactor. They are pressure infused with acetic anhydride, which is uh, the base product for vinegar. So it's not a hard uh, chemical as it sounds. Uh, so it's a clean process that uh, removes the water molecules from the wood and replaces those molecules by acetic anhydride molecules. The result of that is that the wood is uh, harder, uh, waterproof, and insect-proof at the end of this process. It's a clean process in the sense that the, there is no harmful chemicals involved. Uh, there is no harmful byproducts uh, coming from this process, and the wood is safe for use in uh, playgrounds environment, for instance. Uh, through that process, uh, the wood uh, gets a cradle-to-cradle -cradle gold certification. So when you're looking for a, a green product for your project, uh, you can use that wood uh, in all kinds of settings. We use it, obviously, to manufacture poles, bars, and fixtures, but it's a type of wood that can be used for decking, structural bridges, siding on buildings. Um, and the process modifies the uh, warranty on the wood itself in the sense that uh, the wood is warranted 25 years against rot and decay when it's installed in ground and 50 years against rot and decay when it's installed above ground. So when you look at the, the picture here, uh, the pole is about a foot up uh, higher than the ground and so the, the wood part of the pole itself is warranted 50 years against rot. And just to interject real quick, we're actually, if you look at our training calendar, we have an AIA presentation about the Akoya wood uh, coming up at the end of the month. So if you want more information on this material, it's not just poles for Structura, they do all kinds of different products. Exactly. The presentation, the AIA presentation is going to take place in about two weeks. So I invite you to, uh, to join as well for that. I'm going to be the, the one presenting it. Uh, and here you see a quick comparison between the durability of Akoya and other wood species that are typically used for outdoor application and dimensional stability of uh, the Akoya wood versus other wood species as well. So as you can see, Akoya is uh, the most durable wood and the most dimensional stable wood you can find on the market. That's why we chose to use that 
uh, to manufacture our products. Uh, the wood, uh, the, all our wood products are proposed with eight standard stains. Uh, those are essentially water-based stains that are protected with an acrylic layer. Uh, the colors were picked originally to match other wood species that uh, are typically used on outdoor projects. So you have uh, the Finnish matching teak, kumaru, ipe, mahogany, ebony, for instance, or uh, an aged finish, which is the weathered gray S8 at the bottom right. All those finishes are warranted five years against fading and flaking when they are delivered, uh, when the products are delivered on a job site. And they are uh, maintenance free in the sense that uh, since it's warranted five years, uh, you don't have to do anything on this product except from washing them every three to four years uh, to remove the mildew that might do naturally on the product uh, and get it back to normal. So that's uh, the wood we're using to manufacture our products. Uh, in terms of bollard, we have uh, quite a few selection. Uh, the first family of bollards I'm gonna talk about is the Mac, uh, which is one of the oldest one and one of the, the best seller at Structura. It's a wood bollard that can be open on one face or two faces. And that also comes with a matching illuminating column. So when you look at those pictures, it's, in, it's interesting to see the uh, the installation you can do with that, playing with light and shadow, as on the right side picture here, that works both for the column and, uh, and the bollards. Uh, another series is the SPAR LED bollard. So this one is a square bollard that is based out of our square pole, essentially taking uh, shorter. The idea here is to be able to, um, uh, to place LED strips on one, two, three, or four sides of this bollard to provide a, li a vertical light wherever you need it on your project. So you can have a dozen bollards with different illumination configurations depending on where you place those uh, strips of LED on your bollards. Uh, those LED strips can be static white, static color, RGB, RGB white, or amber. Uh, so uh, it can match different applications for your project. And the SPAR LED grows from two feet up to 16, 18 feet. So uh, again, on the column side, you, you can have the light on one, two, three, or four sides. And as you can see on the right side picture, uh, we can even play with uh, the pattern of that LED strip. Instead of having, having it straight, we can uh, do some wave uh, patterns with that on the column. Uh, the ball LED is essentially the same uh, idea, but with a round shape instead of a square shape. And here you can have those LED uh, strips installed at 90 degrees from one another. Again, that product runs from two feet high up to uh, 16, 18 feet. Playing with wood, we also have two solar bollards, uh, the Zora. Uh, and on those two solar bollards, we worked on collaboration in collaboration with a company called First, First Light Technology out of Vancouver, uh, British Columbia a company that has been uh, doing uh, solar solutions for the past 15 years. So the Zora uh, is a, a pathway uh, illumination head. It comes with a solar panel on top. A battery is integrated inside of the shaft of the bollard. Uh, and this fixture comes with 3000 Kelvin, 4000 Kelvin and Ember um, in terms of core temperature. Provides up to uh, 700 lumens output when it's connected to the grid and 300 uh, lumens output when it's a solar version. Uh, the Atta Ballard is the other solar option we, we are offering. This one is more of a visual cue uh, to be installed on your project. Uh, the output is about 150 lumens, so it's not gonna help you get uh, egress lighting on your project, but if you, if you need points of light at the end of your property or uh, close to a pathway where uh, it's hard to get access to the grid. It's a great solution to, uh, to have. A question, um, do you, have you integrated other people's solar panels on larger projects, um, either on the wood side or the steel and aluminum side? Uh, we have worked in the past, uh, again, with uh, First Light Technologies integrating one of their head that has a solar, pa solar panel integrated on it. Yeah, but uh, not really integrating 
those uh, like four by four solar panels <laughs> with a big as battery on it. Yeah. Uh, it, it. We might be able to do that on our steel poles for yeah. structural reason, uh, but on the wood poles, uh, the, the poles are essentially not designed to withstand that kind of uh, uh, wind load, so we wouldn't be able to do it on a wood pole. Yeah, that makes sense. Got it. Uh, and Structura, so we are also now on the market to do a lot of uh, customization in collaboration with designers. Uh, and so we have a lot of startup product, but we are also very open to discuss with you about uh, custom designs. And the bar you see on this picture is a, a good example. It's a, a bar that was designed from an art museum in Wichita. Uh, and what you see here is in every small openings, we integrated tiny floodlights, and so at night it, it shines. It was a collaboration with Derek Porter uh, lighting design for this project. So this is a good overview of, of the bollards we can offer. In terms of poles, uh, so we can go up to uh, 30 feet in-house uh, for wood poles. We have different shapes available. Uh, we can provide round poles, square poles. Both can be tapered or straight, and we also, uh, have the opportunity to, to move from one shape to the other in the sense that you can have a square pole at the bottom that moves into a round shape or the opposite way around. Uh, to show you examples, this is an installation on the waterfront in Toronto where you see a structure of ball poles, round shape, uh, equipped with Celux Olivia head. So what is very important to, uh, to notice is that the fixtures for the most part are from other manufacturers. At Structura, we specialized originally in, uh, in the structures and, uh, on, and we integrate fixtures from any manufacturer on the market. So we provide all the engineering, all the mounting detail to mount those fixtures on our product. We work with a lot of brands and a lot of them are actually represented by uh, SDA in New York City. Uh, so we've done a lot of projects with Celex, uh, Erico, with WF. Uh, so they can, you have a lot of options there to, to integrate on our poles. And so just to touch on that for the specifiers that will be watching, um, what is that coordination like? Are they going to, uh, should they reach out to you or through SDA first? Uh, if they're thinking, I'm going to use, uh, you know, the Salux um, Olivio, um, you know, with this mounting arm and then make sure that it's going to be feasible? Or is it more a matter of down the stream, you'll figure out how to, how to work these things out? Uh, obviously, the earlier we, we get involved, the better uh, as we can... Uh work on the mounting details, uh, but that's our responsibility to do. Uh, so as long as the, the designers know what type of fixtures or what kind of fixtures they want to use, uh, we get their, the spec sheet of that fixture and we take care of all the mounting details. The, the fixture manufacturer doesn't have to modify anything, but it, it is typically separate spec, one spec for the head and one spec for the pole. Got it. Uh, and so you see here different uh, type of applications. Uh, with different heads uh, that you might recognize from various manufacturers. We have installations, a lot of installations on the coast, on marinas. Uh, a lot of them have been designed in New York City. Uh, here you see a square pole with a WF head, for instance, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, here in a marina in Los Angeles. The base is typically two foot high, but it can be modified to, to match your needs on a project. Uh, it's a metal base made out of aluminum. And here you see an example of a pole that is square at the bottom and round at the top. So to, to move from the poles, we also have a, a range of outdoor rated wood fixtures. It's called the Aura. So it exists in round from two to 12 feet in diameter standard. Uh, the Aura square or rectangular, up to 10 by 10 feet standard and the Aura linear up to 12 feet standard. Uh, and here are some applications of what you can do with those fixtures. They can be mounted on a catenary system, whether it's a wall mount catenary or pole mounted catenary. They can be suspended from a canopy or a sailing, and they can provide both direct and indirect illumination. In terms of the illumination, the maximum output you get from uh, those fixtures is about 300 lumens a foot in static white at 4,000 Kelvin. Uh, and here on this picture, you see what a 12 foot ring looks like. The interesting thing is that this fixture here in the picture weighs only 90 pounds. So it's actually a very uh, light fixture made out of plain real wood. Uh, and here are some, uh, some applications of installations we've done around the country with dues. 
So you see different finishes, uh, different mounting style, daytime and nighttime. Uh, the ring here is 12 foot. It's to illuminate a restaurant patio in Orlando. Here you see direct and indirect illumination. And in terms of customization, that's a custom application of project in Iceland uh, where the ring was mounted on a tilted pole. Uh, obviously, those rings are outdoor rated but can be used inside uh, a pro your project as well. Uh, and about 40% of the installation of those Aura fixtures are indoor. Uh, and so you can use that in cafeteria, uh, church, synagogue. This one is in New York City. Uh, so a lot of different applications possible. Uh, that's what the square looks like. And uh, this is what the Aura linear looks like. So you see a lot of, of different opportunities here to, uh, to work with those products. Can you touch a little bit on the, the mounting here that we're seeing? So we're seeing a catenary mount. Can you talk a little bit about how Structura works with catenary and, and can integrate that? Of course. Uh, so Structura has in-house Structura engineer and we can be a one-stop solution for, uh, for your project for catenary system uh, as long as poles are involved. So what you see on this picture here, the catenary system is wall to wall. Uh, so in, uh, in that application, we can provide uh, the fixture, the mounting details, the, the tone buckles and the suspension cables, but the mounting plates on the walls are gonna be designed by someone else and the structure engineer of the building needs to be involved to make sure the walls are strong enough. Uh, but if we go a few slides earlier, like here, uh, we are able to provide the engineering design and the supply of the poles themselves. Uh, so it's a one-stop solution for you guys on a project. And we can do that whether the fixtures are by us or no. Uh, we can still do the engineering and the supply of the poles to sus suspend the whole system. So I think that's a really good, clear distinction. Um, sometimes when it comes to catenary, it becomes who's gonna handle what part of the job. And I think making the distinction that in a building mount application, um, all of the, the turnbuckles and wire and you know steel cable, all those parts and pieces will be provided by Structura, but structural engineering and the wall plates, that's where the responsibility stops. It goes to the building side because it's a structural element. But then with poles, it becomes a completely Structura solution. I think that's really nice and clear. Exactly, and uh, we just uh, released three weeks ago uh, a video on our YouTube channel explaining uh, catenary systems. So I invite you to, to go check it out. And on our website, we have a catenary design guide, which is a, a 12 pages PDF, uh, also explaining you what services we offer and all the information needed uh, from you uh, to allow Structura to work efficiently and quickly uh, on designing a preliminary system and budgeting it uh, for your project. Very cool. Uh, and uh, the last fixture I wanna talk about is the L fixture, which is the an interior rated fixture. So this one is not designed to go outside. Uh, it's the first uh, fixture from Structura that is dedicated for indoor application. Uh, here we work with a different type of wood. It's either made out of walnut or white oak. And it's a linear system that is uh, very flexible. It's based uh, out of the Lego, uh, Lego toys idea where you have uh, different blocks that can be connected together in, in different ways. Uh, so that fixture comes in two, four, and eight feet increments and exists in L shape with that leg dropping down that you see here or a straight piece. And you can create this kind of uh, uh, fun and functional uh, applications where you play with different elevations of the fixture and different orientations because the connecting point between the different blocks is actually side adjustable. So you're not stuck to zero or 90 degree angles. Uh, it can be any orientation you like. For, uh, for those connections. It's a line voltage fixture that provide both direct and indirect illumination. And you can uh, get up to a thousand lumen per foot, both for direct and indirect uh, illumination from, uh, from this fixture. Uh, it comes with different photometry applications. So you have uh, for the indirect, just a clear acrylic lens or an indirect uh, bat wing um, optic as well to spread the light further away. Uh, and this is an example of application you can do with this fixture. So it's, uh, it's very fun to play with. Uh, and if you like that look of a kind of a snake running through your ceiling, but you don't need the light at every point, 
we can still have the wood, a plain wood connecting uh, different pieces together to, to keep running, to keep the, uh, the power feed running. Uh, and it clears the selling of all those drop downs that uh, nobody likes on their projects. Very cool. So that's a quick overview of the, the wood fixtures, poles and bars that we provide at Structura. Uh, uh, if you want to know more, I obviously invite you to visit our website, www.structura.com. Uh, if you go under product, uh, you will find ballards and at the very end, uh, wood poles that have all the information on the wood poles. And I also invite you to, to check our social media uh, on Instagram, Facebook, and our YouTube channel on which you can find that video uh, talking about the catenary structure. Very cool. So uh, I'll finish up with a couple of questions. I, I um, just started blocking and tackling questions. Um, mm -hmm. As far as drawings are concerned, um, the cut sheets I imagine are going to have the basic poll information. Um, when it comes to a, a production or a, a design drawing, uh, I'm thinking a, a designer may choose, I'm just going to use Salux as an example, a Salux mm -hmm. head, um, and a poll, and we've talked about it and that's all going to work. Is Structura going to generate a, a drawing pre-shop drawing or pre-orders uh, or is it only a shop drawing process? How does that, where does a, a, a drawing get folded into the package? It, it, it depends on, on the request of uh, the design team. Uh, typically, uh, we provide, I mean, we obviously provide shop drawing at, uh, at the time <laughs> of uh, releasing the order to, to verify that everything uh, works well and uh, that the right fixture is being ordered and, and things like that. Uh, and from time to time, we, we are being requested uh, drawings of uh, configuration and we provide that without any problem. Uh, but also, a lot of time, the spec sheet kind of uh, is enough for, for the designers and, and they work with that. So, and, and obviously, when it's a custom application or a modified product, where uh, if you want the arm to be longer, for instance, or something like that, we would provide a drawing to, to validate that design with you. Got it. Got it. Got it. Um, all right. I'm not seeing anybody coming up with questions in the Q&A tab. So this was great. It was a nice and concise uh, uh, presentation. Thank you very much for that. Oh, I got one. Just as I said that. All right. Uh, is the linear bollard available in wood and not a combination of metal and wood? This is one question. So unfortunately, no. Uh, at this time, the only uh, purely wood bollards that are available uh, are the ones I uh, presented. Uh, so the, the linear bollard is, is based on an aluminum body and the wood is just a decorative panel. It's, it's not the, the body itself of the bollard. Uh, and can it be done custom? I will have to check. Uh, one of the challenge with that is the, the strength of the wood. The body of uh, the linear bollard is actually pretty small. And to make sure that uh, bollard or a wood product for that matter is, is strong enough we need a specific width of, of wood uh, and so we might we, we can look at it uh, but I, I'm not positive that it might be possible. Got it and Mary is asking are any of the fixtures dark sky rated so heads from a different company a Salux or someone else if it's mounted uh, properly and is dark sky rated as a, a fixture will retain its dark sky rating. I think she may be asking about the bollards. Uh, so the bollards and uh, columns, uh, they, there is a bit of reflection on most of them, uh, actually. So I'll, uh, I'll go back. Uh, there is one bollard that is a dark sky uh, compliant. It's the Zora. It's one of the solar bollards that exists also as an AC version. Uh, so this one is as dark sky uh, compliant. Uh, these ones are obviously uh, not dark sky friendly because there is a lot of vertical illumination. And here there is a bit of reflection of the light uh, on the base, so it's it's not considered dark sky compliant for that matter. There's not a lot of up light, but it's not considered dark dark sky compliant. Right. Um, and then, just so for my own knowledge, the if we do the but, right. Uh, on uh, metal bollards, if you come back next week at the same time, <laughs> we have some solutions for that. <laughs> um, on the uh, on the linear and the rings, um, 
uh, if those are specified just down light, have they ever been tested for dark sky compliance? Uh, they are dark sky, dark sky friendly, but they didn't go through the certification process. Okay, fair enough. So if they're horizontal, yeah, there, there won't be any uplight, but it hasn't been tested. And then Mary is asking, uh, after five years, what is the recommended maintenance? So in terms of maintenance, uh, what really we recommend is every three to four years to, to wash it with soap and water and a soft clothes, and that removes the mildew, so that protects uh, the, the finish a bit, a bit longer. Uh, obviously, it's not right after five years that uh, it starts to, to flake or fade. Uh, but washing it kind of every three to four years, keep it, uh, keep it going. Uh, so far, the, uh, the oldest installation we've had uh, with the, the aquaria wood is about eight years old. Uh, it's in Phoenix, Arizona. So it's a, a very dry place. There's not a lot of mildew, I'll give you that, but it's a lot of sun. Uh, and after eight years, we haven't seen a significant difference in terms of fading. Uh, from the north to the south face of the pole. So it's really about good maintenance. If you install it in, in Florida, uh, I would recommend it. I would recommend a, a washing every two years because the mildew uh, grows much faster, for instance, and that would help maintain the, the quality of the finish much longer. Got it. And then another question has come up about the linear bollard. Uh, can it be done as a custom? Oh, I'm sorry. That was about that, the that was for the wood. Okay. Uh, so, if uh, yeah, if Golnaz, if you want to send us a more specific question uh, through email, uh, that'd be great, and we can definitely look at it. Very good. All right. So we're gonna uh, thank you very much for for jumping on and doing this, everyone. We'll follow up with an email um, to all of you just to thank you for uh, for attending, and then that way you'll have contact information. Uh, for Alexis, and we'll uh, we'll be able to reach back out, and if, if you have any specific questions about the project or modifications or, or pricing or whatever. All right, thank you very much. I'm gonna uh, I'll close this out of this. Thank you all for joining, and thank you JP for the organization. You got it. Thanks very much, everybody.